Hello once again to the viewers and followers of this channel. Welcome to another adventure with Reason. This time I'm going to show you a concept I've been working where I extensively use a very powerful rec extension called Sequences made by the company Robotic Pin. Like all other rack extensions, it can be found online on Reason's shop. Once installed, it sits um, under uh, the players section, as you can see here. In this case, I'm using eight instances of it, some functioning as standalone sequencers, others as controllers. The idea behind this project was to the challenge to make a complete song without using Reason's main sequencer uh, or any lanes on it, including automation, no automation. I could only use CV routing. Now, CV signals, control voltage signals, are virtual electric signals that can be routed through cables from outputs to inputs inputs of several rack extensions and combinators placed in the rack. To accomplish this I had to resort to a lot of techniques I'll show later but before that let's first listen to the achieved result. Um, to start uh, keep in mind that although this is a complete song it is of course very simple uh, nothing too fancy or complex. It serves mainly as a proof of concept. So to start I have here this combinator um, with an instance of sequences inside of it and as you can see there's a red button labeled start on off and in order to listen to the song I will click the button here and the cascade of events will begin to unroll. So let's listen.
as you've watched and listened, the song even starts by slowly raising the volume and ends by lowering down to zero without any automation on the main sequencer. Now let's start then by explaining how this main controller here I made with this combinator uh, that is that has this nice background um, just for show and to indicate the position of the start button. So inside the control combinator uh, you can see this instance of sequences that is mounted on a rather obscure uh, rack extension called IV4 and uh, that is the only one I found on my quite extensive list of rack extensions that allows a signal from a player like sequences to be available at as a gate and note output here. Um, I use this feature many times in this project as we'll see later on. In this instance, the notes I've placed in the sequence, those notes, um, are not a melody. Instead, each note is mapping a part of the song to be performed. So this is kind of a performance map. Uh, the information that comes out from the note connection behind the EV4, IV4, the note information, goes through this cable all the way to this rack extension here. It's called S Select Program. The idea behind this is to allow this rack extension to switch um, outputs of an inputted CV signal to a different output depending on uh, what program is selected. Uh, if you watch here behind it, you see there's an in with a signal and then there's a lot of outs. One, two, three, four, five, six. This other rack extension, this other one here, called CV8X4CV generator, generates a constant CV signal, using this button here, to a different, um, that is routed that is routed through the input of the selected programs, as I told you, here. I need to use six programs, six outputs, that in turn connect to another very interesting rack extension called FRONT8. This rack extension can divi divide the signal um, into different outputs that are defined with these color colored connectors. Uh, this way, depending on the program selected, the CV sig signal can come out on different outputs um, at the same time, which allows to, tr to trigger certain parts of the song simultaneously. To do this, the output signals are routed to trigger inputs of other instances of sequences. Let's see for example the section about the main melodic sequence. This one here. So, you have here the output for it and the cable goes through the trigger in on the sequences instance that contains a melody. Once it is triggered, it will start playing this melody. Um, uh, and uh, I'm using the Europa synthesizer here. So, uh, let's try to watch this in action by altering the corresponding note on the main controller. Here, instead of this one, let's start with the... Uh, let's put this here and just listen to the first one 
and I'm going to put the note on the th third position. I mean, let's see, one, one, two, three. In fact, it's the fourth position because the first is the zero. So this one, let's see. So this will trigger program three, and you listen to this sequence. And also, if you check here, there's two connectors, so you listen to the main sequence and to the chords. Let's check it. Oops, not here, sorry. I have to start one off, I think. Yeah. Sorry. And start. That's just one uh, question. You can hear the chords because the chords are now uh, with the level uh, zero of volume, so you can't hear them. The event to trigger the volume up was not triggered, this one here. Of course, this repeats, and you listen to it again. But let's stop it. So, you see the trigger here? Once it the signal passes to the right route, it comes up here and triggers the sequence to start. So this is done uh, the same way to all other sequences. Now, one thing you surely notice is that the melody repeats, but the notes are being harmonically changed according to the chord being played. I'll show next how I did this. First, I have another sequences. Oh, let me just correct this one here to the. I believe it's the seven position. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, the six. Yeah. Let me just check if this is still working. You should hear the chord sounding, but the volume getting up. No, it's not the seven problem. It is uh, this one here. Oh, because it's not this one. The first one is not this one. I have to undo. Let's start again. See if it all works. That's the six program. Now the volume gets up, starts, but the sequence is already started. That's the chord sequence. So you see, program six as the volume up and the chords. Now the second one is the program one, second step. Let's just place the chords. So let's check this one. So a cable comes from here and if you follow it, it's a long cable, comes to this sequence instance here. Now this is the chords control. So I have this sequences instance that holds four bass notes of the chords used in this song that just play over and over again. These four notes signal are spread to all the other instances of sequences that hold melodic sequences in order to transpose the notes on each of them. This is done using a very nice rack extension called Polymodular System CV Splitter. So you see the <coughs> note and gate signal are routed to this input here and then separated in four uh, outputs. Yeah, 
Also, I need to keep the notes on the melodies harmonically fitted according to the chords itself. Oh, so just watch that before I say this. You have to watch that one of these cables, for instance, this one. I mean, where is, where was the main main sequence? This one. Okay. So see, the transpose CV in comes from the cable here. That same thing happens to all the other sequences. The transpose function is very important so that the notes are transposed according to the bass note of the chord. Now, you also noted that I need to keep the notes on the melodies harmonically fitted according to the chords itself, so I make use of this very useful rec extension called Note uh, Corrector. Sorry, above. You see, Note, uh, note Set from note corrector, I think that's the name. And um, oh, it's by it's the company is Retouch Control. Uh, the rec extension is called Note Set, and this uh, rec extension uh, filters notes and can also correct them according to the inputted chords. So you will check here that. While the music is playing, this is always changing according to the chords, to the inputted chords. Now, to have these chords available, see, they receive it here, get in CV, but we have to generate them. So, in, over, in order to ho have these uh, chords available, um, I have another player, this time built in from Reason Studios that's called Scales and Chords sorry it's here somewhere below Scales and Chords and um, it takes the bass notes bass notes that come from here another cable bringing them here to the combinator and those pass through the player scales and chords. Those are the bass notes you've seen here, this four one. They pass here and create chords. Um, it takes the bass notes and produces complete chords. And according to the scale I'm using in this song, in this case C minor. The result is played on this nice synthesizer called Maya from Pink Noise Studios um, and uh, it's, it's, it's using a nice patch featuring warm strings okay so to have those chords available okay uh, this player plays the chords but of course it needs to pass this to other sequences instances I mean to other not set corrector instances. So to do this, I put the player again on the IV4. I route them out to here to another input on the CV splitter, so that I can have multiple multiple uh, out signals. One of them that comes back to the Maya synthesizer. So the result, let's see, let's start this again and watch it. So the note is played, the chords are generated, they pass through the IV4, sorry the volume was down. And then um, they go to Maya, it plays this the sound. Okay, let's stop. Now, as I said, this result is also routed to some other instance of node set correctors using again the polymodular CV splitter. Another interesting feature used in this project is how to change patterns in another instances of on other instances of sequences 
so that different melodies can be played one after the other without recurring to the use of automation lanes on Reason's main sequencer. So this is the... let's watch this here. This can be seen in the section of the secondary melodic sequence. I call it secondary sequence. So, um, here I use one instance of sequences that has, sorry, this one, that has three patterns. I'll show them. One, two, and three. Um, each with its own slightly different melody, as you can watch. Um, Again, I make use the notes line on this sequence here to to control the one below. So how um, how do I do this? It's not those are not melody, but uh, I'm going to use the numeric values of the notes and route the result to a combinator CV2. So where is it? Uh, the result comes from the IV4. I'm just using the note signal. And you will see, if I open the programmer, that it's routed, this signal is routed to the CV2 input on the combinator. Then, if I click on the, on the option that um, is related to this sequence instance, called variation something, you'll see that the programming here says CV in 2 affects the pattern select parameter that can, can have 1 to 8. So let's show this working. Let's see. How can I show this working? So I'll close this one. See, this one is on playback uh, one-shotted because I just need it to play once. Uh, but this one once triggered, of course. But this one is ungated because I'll have to trigger it several times. So, let's start. I'll just, I have to play both at the, t at the same time. I don't know if it will work well, but we'll check it. I started with this one and it is. Uh, so, uh, oh, it's not working, sorry. I have to put everything on loop. Okay, now it will work. Reset. Reset. So let's try it. See, the first one is the pattern one. Now pattern two is selected. There's another melody. And then it selects pattern three. Okay, it's not synchronized, but you get the idea. You got the idea, right? I'm just going to put this as it was. Sorry. Okay. So the result is that the patterns are being selected one after the other in synchronization. Of course, it didn't happen now, but when we play from the beginning, it will happen correctly. So in this case, pattern 1 is played, followed by pattern 2, then pattern 1 again, and then pattern 3. Uh, now back to the main controller. In order to make a very slow passage or from note to note, program to program, I could not use uh, sequences on tempo um, because even the slowest of those combinations, which is half here and uh, the rate one by four, um, is still too fast for what I needed. So that's why I had to come up with a way to slowly change steps, making use of the trigger input here 
uh, and the playback mode called stepped you see here so how does this work you can watch uh, to generate a trigger signals I mean to generate the trigger signal slowly but periodically I used this nice rec extension called little LFO that has controlled oscillators generating wave signals which can be squared formed. This signal is further modified by another rec extension um, called um, Genitor CV Shaper. And um, you know, it, it will produce a spike on a constant CV signal that can be recognized as a trigger signal by the sequences instance. So you can watch the spikes appearing on this nice scope here once I start the, the song. Let's let's hear it. let's look at it. So once you see this a uh, big spike it triggers the step here. It takes some time. See? It triggers one step now next time another spike appears it will trigger another step there you have it so sorry so you, you mean watching the spikes appear on this, on the, this nice scope called CV7 CV analyzer, and so and of course it triggers the steps here. Also in the middle, I'm using a select CV switch here. You can watch it on the back of the rack. It's just um, uh, to allow or deny the passage of the trigger signal so that the song starts or stops by clicking the button here. Of course, this button is programmed. You can watch the programming of button one in the in a lot of a lot of uh, where is it? Select see button channel one to eight. So it will change the route here of this switch, and so it disconnects the signal once I click on it, and then click. So connects and disconnects by clicking it. Um, well, an annoying situation, as you've already watched, is that this signal is not controlled. The signal originated by the oscillator. I cannot control when it appears because the wave signal, the wave, uh, cannot be started itself. Even if I switch off the LFO, which I, which I do uh, on and off. When I start and stop the song, uh, the LFO just keeps the wave going, so one never knows when the first spike will be showing. That's why I had to maintain the first step empty of notes that route to programs here. You see, the first step is empty. That's just to wait for the trigger. So when I click, I never know when the song will start, but it will start in not a lot of time, just one cycle. So, um, uh, notice also that this LFO is synced uh, to Reason's main sequencer. You see here the tempo. And uh, I had to... So it's synced to the main, to the main sequencer clock and I had to... And in order to keep it very slow, I had to lower the tempo to 60 bits, uh, bits per minute, 60, okay? So it's it's slow, but you can see the spikes. The, the spikes, you've seen the spikes intervals, it's, it's really slow. So, um, finally, I want to talk about how I managed to raise up and down the sound level in the beginning and the end of the song. It's a bit tricky. Um, and maybe there are better ways to do this, but this is what I came up with. So here, in this section here, I call it slow up down level. 
the volume controller. I have another combinator that includes one more instance of sequences, another nice player called Autolatch here, and a very neat rack extension, uh, this time again controller, uh, by Selig, that's the company, um, which um, it has a, a, a very interesting feature. Uh, it can mute and unmute a stereo, a stereo audio signal using a fader for a settable amount of time. So here you set the time. You have a maximum of 30 seconds. So it can take 30 seconds to rise up the volume from zero to the desired level or back from the level to zero again. So it's very f it's very interesting. I, I, in this case, I, I'm using 20 seconds. See, fade time. It's the function fade of the mute button. Very interesting. So this the way this works is, as I said, a bit tricky. But the idea is to trigger the sequences here in order for it to play some notes. That note signal is passed to the auto latch. Where is the auto latch? Here. How? Because this IV4 here, the gate and the notes, go to the combinator. So the combinator passes to whatever is here. here. So it passes to the auto launch. Passing it to, to the auto launch. Um, that is set in latch mode. That means that the notes it receives will remain playing until it receives the same note again. Uh, the resulting signal is then passed through another IV4, just the note signal, I just need the note signal, and it is passed to the CV1 here on the combinator. Correct? See the cable? There you have it. Connect it, yeah, to note out CV. Now, in programming, if you select the selling gain one, this guy here, you'll see that the CV1 signal is routing to the mute output, which can be on or off. So this way, this is switching mute on and off, but it's keeping it on or off. You see, during keeping it on during the entirety of the song, and when it ends, it is uh, again the same note, play again, so the latch goes away and the mute, unmute, I mean the unmuted button becomes muted again. So it means that if I want to start to, to play the song, this button must stay in the mute position. So this results in maintaining the triggered mute button on or off during the necessary time. So this last subject and this rather long project presentation. Still I'm going to just for you watch this mute and unmute. I don't know if you've seen, I don't think so. So let's see. I have to start with mute. Take the latch out. It's not wanting to come out. Let's let's just stop. I don't know if it stopped but let's just stop. Let's see. Okay now. Okay, so now I'll start and you'll watch this happening here. So it started, latched and the mute, unmuted. But it takes some time to raise the volume. The volume is raising, it takes 20 seconds. At the end of the song, it will go down again. Meanwhile, it just stopped and latched here.
There you have it. And now the button becomes mute, but the fader starts working. 20 seconds. So this is the trick to level down the volume. So this was the last subject and it ends this rather long project presentation. I hope you liked it and maybe you can inspire you to dwell into this wonderful world of Reason Rack and its endless possibilities using CV signals. If you have any question or opinion to share, please leave a comment. See you all next time and say, stay safe.